In this set of videos, we take a look at a series of topics relating to the Unit 3 programming project. These videos have been designed to be dual purpose. Students will benefit by gaining an understanding of how best to approach their project and how the MART scheme will be applied against their write-up. And teachers looking to gain some more confidence in this unit will also get information on how to guide their students and mark the project. In this video, we look at tips of how to make sure a project write-up can hit the top mark band for that A-star mark. An inescapable fact of academia is this. If it's not in the mark scheme, you can't get credit. Now, this is not the real world at all. In the real world, if you wrote a program that met all the user specifications, met all the requirements, and came in on time, then you'd get paid. To some extent, it wouldn't matter how you got there, though of course the solution would need to be efficient and cost effective. However, with an A-level project, you could have the most amazingly coded project ever. If the write-up does not produce the evidence in such a way as to hit the marking criteria, then you could still potentially end up with a U-grade. The key then to getting marks is to be aware of the marking criteria in detail at all times. As a student, you should read and make sure you fully understand the mark scheme right from the start before you even start thinking about your project. It will help focus everything you do. You're entitled to a copy of the mark scheme and if you don't have one, ask your teacher for it. Every time you write anything into your project write-up, you must ask yourself the question, is what I am writing allowing me to gain credit towards part of the marking criteria? If you're not producing work which generates markable evidence against the marking criteria, then you're potentially wasting your time and starting to lose focus. However, reading the mark scheme alone is not enough. For a top grade project, you need to pay very close attention to command words. Command words are guides from the exam board, which identify the detail and depth of evidence you need. They're carefully chosen by the exam board to make it clear what the marker or examiner is looking for and how they want you to tackle the project in order to gain marks at the various mark bands. All areas of your project mark scheme are divided into four marking bands. Very roughly speaking, the lowest of the four mark bands would equate to the grades U, E and D. The next one up is around D to C. The third one would be C to B and the top mark band typically exemplifies A to A star work. So clearly, if you want to be getting the best mark from your computing project, you want to focus your efforts in making sure your write-up produces all the evidence needed to hit all the marking criteria for the top mark band. The key to this is just two little command words, explain and justify. The command word explain in its various form appears 15 times in total in the mark grid, seven in the second highest and eight in the highest. In a similar way, the justify command word appears 18 times in total in the mark grid, three in the second highest and 15 in the highest mark band. A careful examination of the mark grid reveals that quite often the only difference between students getting access to the top mark band as opposed to the next one down is one or both of these command words. Take the example of the first bullet point under the analysis section. The second highest mark band reads, described the features that make the problem solvable by computational methods and why it's amenable to a computational approach. Whereas the top mark band reads, described and justified the features that make the problem solvable by computational methods, explaining why it is amenable to a computational approach. And that's it. Just those two little words, justify and explain, separate you from getting six to eight marks instead of getting nine to ten. So what exactly do these command words mean? Well, explain means to give account of the purpose or reasons. 
and justify means present a reason case for actions or decisions made. So for six to eight marks, it would be sufficient for you to simply describe all the features of your proposed program, which would make it solvable by computational methods. But for nine to 12 marks, the detail and contents of this part of the write-up would have to justify each feature you've included. This involves describing the feature first and then backing up the description with a valid reason. It's the why behind the reason. I've included this feature because. Furthermore, you can't just describe why your problem is amenable to a computational approach. You must explain why, backing up what you've said with some valid reasons. It's essentially this extra step or level of depth which returns a C or B grade project or an A and A star one. Looking at the mark grid, you will see this is the same throughout. It is always about the depth and detail. Explain everything you said you've done. Back it up. Don't just make a comment, document a change, make a bug fix, add a requirement or change an algorithm. Instead, justify it. Say why you've done that. A simple trick to help you write up your project with the correct level of depth is to use the what, how, why method. In your write-up, say what you did, then go on to say how you did it, and then explain and justify why you did it. Are you looking for more help or guidance with the project, either as a student not sure what to do, or even as a teacher if you're delivering the project for the first time? Well, with a Craig and Dave Premium Membership, you'll get access to all the following resources. We provide you with three exemplar projects, two graded an A and one at an A star. These are projects that we've submitted by our candidates before and got permission to release. These have been moderated and approved by an exam board and the marks have not been adjusted. So you can be sure these are of high quality and match the mark scheme. Along with these projects, we provide you the marking grid we used highlighting how we applied the marking and the criteria against each of the example projects. We also provide you with additional commentary stating to the examiner how we applied the mark and how we found the evidence in the projects and applied it against the mark scheme. We also have a detailed project guidebook which steps through each section of the project from initial ideas to analysis, design, development, coding and evaluation. This book is aimed at the students, making sure that they can achieve the top mark band and an A star from their project. Examiner tips are provided throughout and examples of best practice. It's a complete guide on how to document and write their projects. This guide is available on Amazon as a separate purchase, but with a Craig and Dave membership, a PDF copy is provided for free to the school. We also have a second version of this book designed at students who wish to do projects that aren't related to games development. And again, this is included at no extra cost. Just so you can be secure that the quality of information you're getting is high, here's some of our past moderator feedback. The marks were considered in line with the national standard, full credit to the Centre of Professional Performance with the first attempt at a new specification and the centre have appreciated the requirements and are able to apply them realistically. Dave and I have been submitting multiple projects every single year for students of different abilities since the first year of the specification, and our marks have not once been adjusted by the exam board.